I ran into Dav. It was so crazy. My mom was doing this little telemarketing thing and it was on Hollywood. And so, you know, back then, you know, I'm young and she like, I be seeing Ice-T up here. I be seeing, you know, all of these different artists up here. And back then he had Corner Records. He had a record company. So I ended up going up there or whatever, not, and I ended up running into Big Rich and Rich ended up bringing Daff into the play. And so he just was hearing me freestyle and rapping. And he was like, homie, this is what you meant to do. This is what you meant to do. Like, I ain't got a whole bunch of money for you, but what I will do is I'll help you and move forward as much as possible. And that really just started bringing a lot of dudes from over there around me and I'm around them drinking and, you know, going out with them and going to different functions with them and doing shows and things like that of that nature. So, yeah. More than anything, we just was cutting records, just cutting records, cutting records, cutting records. And so a demo was nothing, you know, again, you, I was young, so writing and beat making and things of that nature was just, it was new to me. So I'm embracing it and learning. And so to be able to have people like Ice around, and that was the first person to ever put me in a, in a studio, Ice T. That's the first dude who ever put me in a studio. And he put me in the studio and he was just, you know, Ice, man, he went hard on me. He was like, man, you gotta know your shit. You need to remember your shit when you wrote your shit. Remember your shit before you walk up in here. He was just, I need you to spit it like this. But I took all of that in and just absorbed it because this is a, this is a legend. This is a legend. So you giving me the opportunity. Um, I'm glad that I looked at the glass half full instead of half empty because I learned so much from Ice over the years, man. And he's always been one who was able to sit me down and just break down so many different things about the game. And, you know, uh, show me so much but when he first put me in that studio definitely everything changed because i realized that this shit was real so from there daff went and ended up getting all of the studio equipment buying keyboards my nigga rome it was a producer r&b producer he ended up bringing him there and romey and he used to just sit down with us and make beats with us and me and my nigga Diz, we just would be in there writing shit down and just really just working at some point, people are starting to hear your music. Right. Well, and, and I guess that was through the studio. Was it through this studio? Then? No, it wasn't through this studio. Um, <laughs> it's so crazy. My brother, it was his birthday. And so um, this is right after my first wife had passed uh, spinal meningitis. And um, I had told him, man, I'm done. Fuck that shit. I'm not rapping no more. I'm cool. And so um, I stopped going to the studio, all that shit, period. And um, he was like, it was his birthday. And so he was like, man, fuck that shit, Black. Come on, man, let's go to the studio, man. I'm finna roll up some. We finna go to the studio. It's my birthday, bro. You could at least go for my birthday. I was like, fuck it, come on. And um, when we went in there, my brother had already laid down a song, so I pull up. And I just see his face like, damn, I thought you wasn't going to even come, bro, bro. I was like, no, nah, man, I ain't going to do that. And I had just got off work. And so I went in there and I never forget, I must have laid down three songs in less than 17 minutes. One of them was Pots and Jars. One of them was called Pots and Jars. I can't remember the other ones. But I laid those three songs down and them dudes took those songs, man. And they had been in the industry for a while. But I didn't know what the fuck they was doing with the songs, so shit. It was, I was, I'm in there just with my brother. It's his birthday. This is what he want to do. Boom, 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 boom. But, you know, I'm, I'm back doing me. I'm working. I'm, I'm working up at Target doing security. I have my other little job. You know, I'm selling my little weed and shit. All that same shit. And so, dude hit me up and was like, yo, hey man, I want to take you, you know, up to Warner Brothers and Woo Woo Park. Then the other one was, oh man, we want to take you over here. And so one of them took me to meet who became my A&R, Pete Farmer. It just seemed like, you know, it just clicked. I liked Pete's vibe. Pete was energetic. You know what I'm saying? And he really had a vision and he just was like, yo, nigga, this is, you can really do this shit. And, and you know, I f I'm fucking with you. And so I went and had meetings with Dev Jam West and I went and also had meetings with other companies and so forth and shit. So it was cool though, man. It was definitely cool. 
I just ended up liking Virgin a lot better and they was offering the most money at that time. So it just seemed incentivized. The money, me being able to work with Pete, actually at the time I think he had J1 and he was working with another producer by the name of Lance. Yeah, I think so. But man, we was just rocking our records and recording. So, and I ended up signing to him. But so it, usually people are struggling to, to find one deal. It seemed right. like you had options at this time. Yeah, I had options. <laughs> I had options. Um, there was multiple companies that wanted to sign me, um, but Pete made it personal. You know, um, me. You know, I'm hustling. I'm in the streets for real, my nigga. So. You know, when I say I'm in the streets, I'm in the streets, 100%. Um, I'm working, I'm hustling, I'm doing all of this, but Pete made it his job to always call me. Yo, nigga, you good? You good? What's up? He would come like, come up to the office. Come up here and fuck with us. Pete, he wasn't letting it go. Like other companies, I would go in there and it would be on a business structure. Don't get me wrong. They was talking good shit, but it was just that Pete made it a personal mission. And so I just felt that the interest was there and that he was more in tune and involved and wanted to really see a nigga win. So it made only sense for me to go, you know, fuck with Pete. Pete, you know, he kept pressing. So he was like, I was like, yo, Pete, you know, I'm working two jobs, bro. I mean, this rap shit don't even seem like it's something viable to me. I'm, I just did that shit on some spare of the moment type shit. And um, he's like, no, nah, nigga, I can get you a check. I can get you. A real, I can get you to the check. And so Virgin was so amped on Pete's word that shit. Virgin cut me a check for 14000 out of, you know, the 300000 that they would end up giving me. And so when they did that, I was like, oh, shit. I quit my job and all that shit. I'm like, no, nah, shit, it's over with. I'm finna do this shit. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.